today's how-to video, I wanna share with you a little bit about how to show care. Now, for some of us, this is a redundant video because it just comes naturally for you. God's gifted you so terribly well, but for some of us, thinking about some steps to actually engage with one another and show care can be really helpful. So I hope today to share five, t five tips that might just make it a little bit easier. I'm gonna call it my five eyes, and they are incarnation, imagination, investigation, imperfection, and intercession. Let me explain. Incarnation is one of the most important ones. This is about showing up. It sounds really basic, but it's one of the most powerful things I've ever heard of. Sometimes when our friends are struggling or something is difficult, we think, oh, I wouldn't know what to say. Oh, it might get weird. One of the most powerful things you can do is just show up. Just be there and sit in that space with them. If you ever read the book of Job, you'll know how well his friends were doing when they just showed up. The trouble started when they started trying to solve his problems with all of their answers. One of the things I think the devil does is he says to us, oh, it'll get weird. You won't know what to say. And so we back away. Don't be fooled by that lie. It might be weird, it might be awkward, but by just showing up and sitting with one another or being incarnate, we can make a world of difference to each other. The second I is imagination. Why imagination? Because imagination is essential for showing empathy. And empathy, Dr. Henry Cloud says, is one of the key ways that we connect with one another. Empathy is literally to be in feeling. Sometimes I'm not feeling what you're feeling, but I show empathy by imagining how you do feel, imagining what that feeling might be like, even if it's not mine, and journeying with you in it. It's a powerful way for us to connect with one another and again, to show up in the feeling place. The next I is investigation. This is about asking open questions. Again, often we come to one another and you think, I just wouldn't know what to say. It's not about the answers you bring. In fact, pastoral carer Jan Corbett Jones says that a hurting heart has no ears. People often aren't after our answers and our lectures. They're after us being with them. And so our very own Faye Brampton, who's been caring for so many of us for so long, says, look, one of the things that's really important is to ask some open-ended questions. What are open-ended questions? They're questions that don't end with a yes or a no, but give people an opportunity to express how they feel. What if I run out of questions, you ask? Well, that's okay, that's fine. Sometimes too many questions can feel like an interrogation. And so Jill McGilvray suggests that aside from questions, you might also just listen for some of the strong feeling words that come out as someone speaks. They say, oh, I'm quite upset about this. You share with them, it sounds like you're quite upset. They may then respond, I'm actually very mad. So just by repeating back some of the things you have heard might help somebody open up and share some of the things that they are feeling. That's investigation. Another, imperf another important one is imperfection. Again, from the playbook of Christian psychologist, Dr. Henry Cloud, imperfection is about being vulnerable and connecting with one another through vulnerability. The kind of vulnerability he's describing is where we're weak enough that someone can relate to us, strong enough that they can depend upon us. Now, no one relates to Superman because he can leap tall buildings in a single bound. That's great that you're strong, Superman, but I can't relate. Likewise, uh, if we're so weak that someone can't depend upon us, that's not terribly helpful as well. Imagine this scenario. A child wakes up in the morning, says, Mum, I can't go to school. The work's too hard. I'm just not going. Mum, practicing vulnerability, that is being weak enough to relate, strong enough to depend, sits down on the bed next to the child and says, you know, sometimes at work, the work is too hard. My boss has challenges. I don't even know what to do sometimes. But I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and put my work gear on, have breakfast, go in and give it my best shot. Mum has just shown, yeah, I struggle too. I'm weak enough, you can relate. But I'm strong enough with an example of having a go that you can depend. Imperfection or vulnerability is just such a powerful way to connect. 
And finally, the one you know well, intercession. A great way that we can serve one another is to pray. You might offer to pray over the telephone, you might pray when you're with someone, or maybe if they're not comfortable with it, you can say, hey, I'll pray for you later. But it's rare that anyone feels not cared for when someone says, I've prayed for you. And this is what Paul said to the Ephesians in a chapter that you may know well, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. I pray that out of his glorious riches, God may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know the love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And so there are so many things that we can do to show care for one another. But if you're thinking, mm, I never quite know what to do, maybe try my five eyes, incarnation, imagination, investigation, imperfection, and intercession. And I'm sure the spirit will lead you in looking after one another.